Holy Spirit living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or are in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children in the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration by your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, Protect and govern it always by your goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities. It consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me to the most high they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria, and I will return them to their homes says the Lord, the word of the Lord. 
The psalm for today is Psalm 107. We will read responsibly by verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all who the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Um, in desert wastes, they found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Whoever is wise will ponder these things and consider well the mercies of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earth earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Lord Jesus Christ. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? 
So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Please be seated. You guys might have noticed I'm not Father Marshall. Hi, I'm Jerry Welch. I'm a deacon. I serve at St. Francis of Donnelly here in the diocese. Those words are very dear to me. Usually when I preach, this is how I start. They come from Psalm 19, verse 14. And I copied that practice from my former rector, Valerie Balling. She always said these words right before preaching at my home church, St. Barnabas in Monmouth Junction. I liked the way they sounded. And I thought I knew what they meant. Something like, hey, God, I'm going to preach. I hope I get this right. But recently, I studied this verse and discovered it's more of a confession and an offering to God. Hey, God, I messed up yesterday. Forgive me, let me start over. And thanks for all you've given me. And may I do all in your name as I do things today. But you know what? I'm gonna mess up again today. So forgive me when I do that too. I looked at a lot of translations of this verse and I even went to the message, which as many of you know, is not really a translation, but more of an interpretation and a paraphrase. And I kind of like what it said. Keep me from stupid sins and from thinking I can take over your work. Today, we are having what some people call a deacon's mass. The bishop prefers that we call it Eucharist in special circumstances. As you know, the special circumstance is that Father Marshall is on vacation and he couldn't find a supply priest, so here I am. Some of you may have met me during the COVID vaccination. I worked with Father Marshall on that. And I see the deacon's job as a holy troublemaker. We stand on the doorstep of the church and the world. It is my job to help God's kingdom come here on earth. It's your job too. The church was never meant to be a comfortable social club. No, it's a place where we gather in community and hopefully learn to love and serve God and each other through prayer, worship, and service. What does love look like? Love looks like living into our baptismal promises. Today's readings have a common theme. God loves us and cares for us, even though we think we can take over the creator of the universe's job. Most of us are guilty of that kind of thinking. Hey, I got this, God. I'll call you the next time I'm in trouble. Pray when you're at rock bottom. But kind of hard to pray when life's going your way. I know I pray a lot harder when the poo hits the fan and when things are going good. But you know, that's not what we promised. Nope. We are called to be Christians all day, every day, not just when it's convenient. Our duty is to thank God for life's blessings and to care for God's earth and God's people. It has been said that when God hates all the same people I do, we're trying to make God in our image instead of the other way around. This is a very divided world we're living in. As many of you probably have heard, this week is the gathering of bishops from across the Anglican church. And it's called Lambeth. We Episcopalians are part of that communion. But like most families, we don't always agree. They are our brothers, but we, don't always treat each other with love and kindness and understanding. And I, I heard something really funny. It said, 
like at your family reunion. Not everybody talks to everybody else, but everybody talks to somebody. This convention was a call to reset relationships, to remind the bishops that their family through worship and prayer, that's all they were going to do, basically a bishop retreat. But one week before the conference, somebody snuck in a proposal stating that marriage is between a man and a woman only. There was no option to dissent. The only option was to agree or to say, we'll, we'll discuss it more in future. No wasn't on the table, but we are called to honor all people. By saying that marriage is only between a man and a woman, we do not honor our LGBTQI siblings. We're trying to make God in our image instead of the other way around. Today's gospel brings us two brothers. One brother feels like he's been mistreated. Maybe that's his older brother. In biblical times, the older brother was the one that got to say what happened with the family inheritance. And he wanted Jesus to make his brother do right by him. But Jesus, like usual, doesn't actually address what's going on. He didn't want them to just stick by the rules. He wanted us to act as children of our loving God. That is a call that we honor the dignity of all God's children, all the rich, the poor, the black, the white, the gay, the straight, everyone. Our leadership acknowledged the dignity of all God's children. The Bishop of New Hampshire said, after several days of vigorous response to the draft of call on human dignity, the call's language has been revised to say more accurately that the bishops of the Anglican community are not in agreement with these matters, but we are committed to walking together in the witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He also said, despite media reports, he did not see widespread and deep discord. What he saw was prayer, fellowship, and the desire to be friends in Christ, even amongst those with whom we disagree. He saw a passion to continue God's mission to heal a world imperiled by war, catastrophic ecological collapse, wounding gaps in wealth and privilege, and the need to repair relationships broken by civil, religious, and economic violence. Jesus was often confronted by those who sought to trap him in controversies. Even the cross could not hinder his mission to include all humankind on the journey to the kingdom of God. Nothing ensnared him, not even death. I finished my sermon. I was like, okay. But then the other shoe fell. The conservative bishops refused to take communion. They would not celebrate with the bishops Q plus, and they wanted sanctions for the churches that allow same-sex marriage. Really? So much for progress. I am called to honor the right of same-sex marriages in my church and in my country. I think Bishop Carly Hughes from the Diocese of Newark said it well. Church fights are an instrument of evil to keep us from our calling to bring God's love, mercy, and healing to the world. A friend of mine at work who was Jewish has always told me, Jerry, you should preach on this poem that my rabbi used. It's called The Dash. You see, when we die, we have the person's birth date and then their death date. In between the birth date and the death date, you see the dash. That dash is had the memories you made. Make the most of that dash. May God's kingdom come. You or your parents promised to uphold the dignity of all people. I encourage you for look, to look for places in your life where you can do that. We are stewards of the gifts we are given. I pray that we use those gifts to honor God and each other. But you know what? I can guarantee that you will fall short of your promises. But you know what? You can also start again tomorrow and ask God to keep you from stupid sin. Amen.
We believe in one God, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, children of God, let us come before the Most High with humility, saying, Great and holy God, incline your ear to us. Set our minds on things divine, O God, that your church may guard itself against the love of earthly things and instead be rich toward you. Great and holy God, may all who dwell in the world, those of both high degree and low, incline their hearts to wisdom and meditate on understanding. Great and holy God, give us grace to be wise and generous stewards, O God. Open our eyes to see your abundance and our reliance. We invite you to add prayers of thanksgiving. Great and holy God, Bless all those to whom we are connected. May we value our relationships more than our possessions. May we realize that in Christ, all human distinctions cease to matter. We pray for justice and peace. Great and holy God, comfort and heal all those who are in pain or sorrow or any kind of trouble. May we who have known sorrow, pain, and trouble show them mercy and compassion and remind them of the hope we have in Christ. You are invited to add your own intercessions. Great and holy God, we acknowledge our mortality before you, everlasting God, and we rejoice in the hope of being raised with your Christ. We remember before you the lives of our forebears, May they find in you rest from their labors. Great and holy God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Anne Marie, Renee, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Myra, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Ann, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Shirley, Betty, Guy, Pete, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Bill, Eddie, George, Pat, Tom, AJ, Brandon, Gail, Lisa, Teddy, George, Carol, and the O'Donnell family. We remember as well in the Anglican cycle of prayer, the Church of the Province of West Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the ministry of the diocesan choir camp. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Alice, Ron, Niels, John, and Thomas. We remember those marking anniversaries this week, especially Brenda and Joseph especially Nicole, Matthew, Connor, Matthew, Austin, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. In times of conflict, 
Oh God, you have bound us together in common life. Help us in the midst of another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Are there any announcements? No, y'all don't do that. In my church, this is where they say the announcements. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the most high. their hands in. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To give him thanks and praise. And now, as our Savior, Jesus Christ, has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Please be seated. This one.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome to receive, as I'm sure you guys know better than I do. We have two chalicers and you can either intinct or drink the wine. I give you okay. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Do they receive? Okay. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God's blessing be with us. Christ's blessing. Christ's peace be with us. The Spirit's outpouring be with us now and always. Amen. <laughs> Let us go forth in the name of Christ.